Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. This is uh, video four in a series that we've been shooting, which is helping artists with their websites. So we've done three others. If you haven't seen those already, we'll pop some links down below. It's probably best to just have a look at those if you haven't already done so, because it's gonna mean this one will make a lot more sense. <laughs> Now there are three parts to today's video. The first one is site structure. So we're going to be talking about things like menus and how to organize the data when your visitors come to visit your website. The second topic will be page content. So what do I mean by that? Things like how to structure the page in a concise and organized and readable format, the kinds of things you'll be putting on your pages and the best way to structure it for your visitors. The third topic we'll talk about is having a very clear and simple message on your website, including where to put buttons and things called calls to action. Now, don't worry about the technical stuff. We're gonna go through that. So let's kick things off with number one, which is site structure. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Well, all we really have to give consideration to is how the best way to organize all the pages that you have on your site. Now, as a general rule of thumb, and if you've used a website in your life, which I hope that you have, you will understand that they, we have things called menus and we also have internal links. Now, I'll just give you a quick explanation of both just so you completely understand. Your menu is normally sat at the top of a web page and if you're you know, be on a tablet or a desktop computer, it'll be a series of words and it'll give you locations you can go to, you know, home, about, paintings, contact, that kind of thing, that's your menu. But you also have another way of navigating and those are called internal links. So for instance, as you read a web page, you may see some text that is in a different color, maybe it's highlighted or bold, and as you hover over it with your finger or a mouse, you can click on it and it takes you to another page. So they're called internal links. So when building your site, it's really, really important that you give consideration as to how you want people to navigate and where you want them to go to. So if we just think now for a second about menus, it's probably the most important thing that you'll do on your website in terms of being able to take people to where you want them to go. Now on mobile devices, which let's be honest, all of us probably are using, you may have seen as you visit web pages, these menus which are, you've got these tiny little lines up in the corner or somewhere on the screen. Now that's actually called a hamburger menu. It's pretty cool actually because those three lines look like the top and bottom of the bun and the middle line is the bit in the middle. So that, the hamburger menu, when you tap on it, down comes the menu and you'll be able to navigate to where you need to go. Now hamburger menus are very important and they should be exactly the same on your mobile device, on your tablet, and also when you check it on a desktop machine. So navigating on menus, very, very important. When you consider how you're going to structure your navigation menu, what I would advise is this, that you put your most important pages or the pages that you want people to visit the most towards the top. So let's go back to the mobile device again. You tap on your little three uh, horizontal lines, your hamburger menu, you tap, down comes your menu. And for instance, maybe at the top, you've always got your home button, so people can always navigate back there very quickly and very easily. But your most important pages, for me, it's the art and the art for sale. That'll be my top one. And then I'll structure everything from there, including things like a contact page. Maybe if you run a blog, you might want to have that in your menu. There'll be a bit about yourself, that kind of thing. So we're just really keeping it quite top level and very simple in the way that you structure it. Okay. Moving on from that, if you're planning to have a volume of pages or you have a lot of information that you want to get across, and I'll give you an example. Let's say you want to have a page about your studio where you work, or perhaps you want to have a page with some videos in it, or maybe you want to have some client testimonials or something like that. Then you can also give consideration to submenus. What do I mean by that? Very simple. Let's go back to the mobile device again. You click on your hamburger menu, you have a drop down, and you may have a list of seven or eight pages. But if you tap on one, you can then make it expand a little bit further. 
and those are called submenus. So this is just a way of being able to categorize information into small pockets. For instance, I have a tab called About Me, but under the About Me tab, I have several other pages which are all linked to what I do. So if you want to have a lot more information than just single pages, then this is a really good way to organize yourself. So just have a think, write down on paper exactly how you want your menu to look and which kind of pages that you're going to introduce. Okay, so that is basic navigation. The second topic we're going to cover is page layout and content. So there's a whole, I, you know, I could probably shoot 20 videos about content, but I'm going to keep this very, very simple and give you a few basic pointers about what to look for. Okay. Now we all work in a visual medium. So having pages with words on it is great, but we also need pictures. Now, a picture tells a thousand words. Pictures are wonderful. We all work in a visual medium. That's exactly what we want to see. So if you're going to put things onto a page, make sure you've got writing and back it up with some photographs. Now I'll give you some examples. I have an about me page, well, like a lot of us do. And my about me page, I think, complete with Adrian's photos, has got about 15 photographs on it. And we go into a lot of information. Now, the important thing about that is that we engage our visitors. You know, your visitors want to see what you look like. They might want to see you working. So as you're talking about what you're doing, for example, in an About Me page, get some photos in there. And that should be relevant no matter what page you're working on. Okay, Even a Contact Me page, get some photos in there. So as you begin writing, as you put your words into your pages, it's absolutely critical that you put in a title for your page. And your title should be matching what you write about underneath. Now, depending on the platform you're using, you'll have a space somewhere to put a title in. So it's really, really important that whatever you're writing about down here is matched in your title up there. Our third topic today is calls to action. Now, I can see you glazing over. Please don't panic. Stay with me. I'm going to put some visuals on the screen now and tell you practically exactly what I mean by calls to action. Okay. So as you'll probably see now on the screen, I'm going to give you an example of my home page. Now, there are two things I want to talk to you about now. Call to action is one. And the other thing is, is about having a clear, simple message. And really this needs to go completely through your website. Okay. Let me explain what I mean. So you can see now on my home page, as soon as you land on it, I'm doing two things. Very first thing I'm doing with words is describing accurately and simply what it is that I do. So I'm pointing that to now on the screen. The other thing you can see is a giant red button that it says explore now. And this is my call to action. All that really means is this is what I would like one of my visitors, all of my visitors to do. They can find out exactly what I do, which is the, my clear, simple message. And then I want them to click that button and go and have a look at all my lovely art. So that is my action button. Essentially, all it does is say, please click this. This is awesome. This is why you've come here. And we can build these calls to action into all of our web pages. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a button. Perhaps it might be a box where you want somebody to fill in their email address. A really good example of this is an email subscribe banner. So if you want someone to subscribe, you'd ask them to put in their email address and click submit. And your submit button is your call to action. So all we're really saying is this is something really good and this is what I would like my visitor to do. So I hope that on the homepage gives you an example of what I mean by a call to action. Now these can be in the form of, and again, I'm just pulling out random examples. These can be boxes that you fill information in. They can be just a simple click of something. They can just be text, but it's being able to build in those points on each page where you would like to, uh, a user to do something that takes them somewhere that's relevant to what they're looking at. Okay, does that make sense? Nothing to be afraid of. Calls to action are great. In actual fact, they help people navigate through your site. So I'll give you one more example. So if I, I'll put it onto screen. 
So if I click perhaps on a painting, and as you'll see, as I scroll down now, I've got lots of other buttons, maybe something where someone can inquire, maybe where they can go and look at further information or look at renting a piece. So at each point, I'm giving my user plenty of other options, plenty of bullet points for them to go and continue their journey and give them more information. And this is a really cool way of being able to help your visitors navigate through your website. Thank you so much for watching the video today. If it's helped you, then give us a thumbs up and don't forget to give us a subscribe down below because we've got tons of cool content coming up, including all this about websites and a myriad of other things as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today and we'll see you next time.